Hi guys, there's hundreds of different videos of Muslim apologists in Hyde Park in, in the UK in London who all use various degrees of lies and deception, none of them honest or fact-based. Now, the video which in my eyes takes the cake is one that I was directed to called Burr Muhammad Speaks with Atheist Jake on a channel called Guidance Avenue. And it contains, and it's, well, it's a mere 35 minutes, but it contains almost every lie, every embarrassing fallacy, every false claim Muslim apologists normally use to impress people who don't know the Islamic texts and the associated apologetics. Why he does this? When, I don't know, anyone in this day and age can easily find out that he lied is actually beyond me. So, okay, there's a lot to cover, so let's hit it. And I'm sorry, I'm not going to be able to hit everything. And the thing is that I think he left out the actual, the, the KCA, the Kalam cosmological argument and, and a few other things. But otherwise, he goes into all of these things. So then after a short logo and the usual superstitious Islamic greeting in Arabic, it becomes painfully obvious that this Burr Muhammad, <laughs> I don't know, I know MR, which is Mr. Mr. Muhammad, but it's not a spelling error because I've seen this before. So I think this Burr actually means brother Muhammad. I don't know why they do that. I think it's stupid. Anyway, this Burr Muhammad does not understand what an atheist is. It doesn't deter him from commenting on the words, displaying his arrogant and bigoted attitude we see throughout the video. You know, it's, fun. it's funny that I learn, I read, I study and ask before commenting on Islam. But Muslims really almost never do the same when it comes to atheists. And in any case, an atheist has no belief and no opinion, least of all on anything scientific like developmental biology or cosmology because after a few seconds in this video the Muslim starts off with cosmology and of course his first line. Um, Alright Jake so just a little about yourself maybe a bit about your beliefs or should I say disbeliefs or just where you stand on the creation of the universe. Anything imperatively in this universe if you're going to stick on it with a certainty and belief there has to be some evidence to back it up. He does not understand anything here not even the basics of cosmology and how things work and ask Jake about his disbelief. Now it's not a disbelief. Weird. He talks about imperative when I think the word he's looking for is empirical. And he talks about the necessity of evidence, except of course when it comes to his God. And then after like all this, he jumps to the Quran and the Big Bang. Now he's somehow fascinated by this because I don't know, he's blissfully unaware of the fact that he's just introduced a 10,000 million year error into the Quran. Because the Big Bang and the formation of Earth are separated by approximately that time span. So he demonstrates that he's totally ignorant, completely uneducated and utterly clueless regarding real world cosmology. And just in general scientific models around the origin of our universe. In City Lies about scientific models and the contents of the Quran. He talks about creation of the universe by a God from out of nothing, from just, you know, the, the, the way that a God would do that. How does a God create a universe? We'll never know because the Quran doesn't say anything. I mean, has, has he established or demonstrated that the universe was indeed created? No. He simply tricks Jake into accepting the premise and then quickly jumps to the next topic, claiming the Quran is for mankind and then immediately contradicting himself by asserting that the Quran was written in ancient or classic Arabic. We need to understand this is a dead and pretty useless language. Hardly anyone in mankind today bothers to study it. And he blatantly lies claiming there's only one version of the Quran, where I have shown on multiple occasions, including a down to photographic evidence, that this is not the case. Again, well, I don't know why, but he claims that Jake is mentioning the Big Bang, where 
he was the one who brought up the origins of the universe and now claims the Quran actually mentions the Big Bang, which of course it does not. He then demonstrates that he's really lying by reading a translation of chapter and beer, which is the 21st chapter, sentence number 30. Do not the unbelievers see that the heavens and earth were joined together before we split them, we made from water every living thing, will they not then believe? A flat earth, by the way, where above, this is what he says, where above this flat earth, you have the various heavens. Really. And this is not contrary to scientific explanations and models. Really. <laughs> What is telling is that he's not even aware of historical and much older texts how they describe the same separation of earth from the heavens, which is copied here into the Quran, as are a lot of things anyway. So there's so many mistakes in this video, it's actually it's embarrassing. Like he claims, citing the Quran, that all organic matter is made from water. Really? Is, is that scientific? Is that scientifically accurate? Come on, there's only one thing you can make from water, and that is water. You can, you can split the molecules by adding energy or increase the value by adding whiskey. But you can't make anything from water without something else. Well, the lies are getting even thicker because he starts talking about truth. Now. And our book of understanding truth. And that's because it's a book that doesn't have any lies or any crookedness inside the book itself. Because you pose an atheist's criteria of understanding, which I He makes it look as though what he calls an... And now, please, you need to understand this. An atheist criteria of understanding. What? So this... Atheist criteria of understanding, he makes it look as though this is incapable of truly understanding the Quran. Why would the atheist criteria of understanding make it impossible to understand the Quran? I don't quite get it. Now, in, instead of using a more godly means of communication, he maintains that his God wrote books without bothering to establish the existence of said God. He simply asserts that his belief that a, a God is the author is justified because the Quran says so and because he read the book as a child, which I, string, I strongly doubt, but, I, but he is still childlike as he doesn't see the internal contradictions because he uses this all-powerful and all-knowing so sufficient all able all powerful omniscient om omnipotent god now he says next the quran provides guidance but that is nonsense muslim males are circumcised copied from the jews i suppose not in the quran muslims copied others to pray five times a day not in the quran they say the shahada not in the Quran. Wearing a hijab, playing music, drinking alcohol, painting of Muhammad, none of these are mentioned in the Quran. And what is there still requires human interpretation. Then he talks about the moon. No, it's just a lie. For example, in the Quran it speaks of how the moon is a reflected light of the sun. That it has a borrowed light. The Quran does not mention reflected light from the moon. And then, because borrowed light, why would that be the same as reflected light? And, and the word is actually used elsewhere in the Quran to describe the Islamic God. That is the Islamic God, this, this Allah. Is, is that a borrowed or a reflected light? Really? <laughs> Come on. And then, again, he blatantly lies, saying that the Quran does not contradict anything scientific. Scientific proof. You will never find anything contradictory to scientific proof, you know, established true science yeah. in the Quran. Well, scientific. And, yeah, right. And speak fluent but Arabic and a piece of steak can revive a corpse. Is that scientific? If you look at the Quran, you realize anything that can be verified in the Quran is wrong. And now, 6.30, again he uses and abuses the word truth, claiming that if the Quran were wrong, it would be discarded. And again, nothing in the Quran that can be verified does verify. Nothing. It's all wrong. Is it discarded? No. Then, 
the, the Quran, no, it, I, I don't understand. The Quran does not challenge non-believers to find crookedness in the Quran. And God says in the fourth chapter, the 82nd verse, that he challenges the disbelievers to find crookedness in the text of the Quran. And no one has been able to bring this forward. It's about something like it, whatever that may mean, and whoever will judge what is like it. And no, it's actually been done thousands of times, so don't lie. Least of all by Muhammad himself, you know, the satanic verses. He thought that it's, uh, uh, doesn't matter. But it's the 21st century for God's sake. So why lie when anyone can immediately check and expose these lies? I would never find any faults in the religion. Um, Islam to this day stands to be the, the most uh, widespread, fastest growing religion in the world, statistically speaking. Muhammad, the name Muhammad is the most common name in the UK and it's also the most common name in the world. He claims there's no faults in Islam. Now, here in the real world, we have a Quran full of mistakes and contradictions and the content is horrific, totally contrary to human rights today. So both the text and the contents are faulty. Does he seriously find pleasure in raping captive women or beheading their husbands? Does he seriously condone stoning a human being to death? Or does he, does he think that it's okay, like marrying off his five-year-old daughter to a 50-year-old man to be that guy's third wife or something? Really? No fault in Islam? Come on. And. No, it's not the fastest growing religion, because many groups, cults and sects make that claim, and none with any kind of evidence. Uh, it's funny, uh, Mahdiya, Sufi, Shia, and all these groups, suddenly Muslims again, is ISIS who, according to Muslims, have nothing to do with Islam, suddenly welcome when it comes to inflating the numbers? How do you establish that somebody is a true follower of Islam? And then, Muhammad. No, it's bullshit. The, the name is not the most popular name in the UK or the world. And if it were, so what? It wouldn't signify anything. This is the point. So I don't know why he even brings it up. He is fascinated by, by anything scientific because he doesn't understand it. Well, this is a book 1400 years ago that speaks about embryology in depth as well. In the Quran, for example, it speaks about embryology. It speaks about the stages of embryology. No, the Quran does not speak about embryology. It does not mention the stages of embryology. Not at all. The Quran knows only one thing and that is creationism. From nothing or whatever, or clay or 13 other materials. Take your pick. So we believe that the Quran came down 1400 so, uh, years. The same years stupid assertion as always. What is 1400 years ago? 617 CE. Was there a Quran? No, of course not. According to the Islamic fairy tales, it took another 16 years. So why come up with this, this, this 1400 years ago instead of coming up with an agreed date? If you look at the Quran, apparently it started like 610, 611, round about there somewhere in CE. Now, if you go and you add a few years in Mecca, then you've got a couple of sentences, but not a complete Quran. So, it's, it's quite weird. And in the real world, by the way, the Quran only appeared a few centuries later. So the whole thing is <laughs> pretty stupid anyway. And they went to profess that there's no deity where they worship but Allah alone. Okay, and now he goes apeshit with claims of angels and, and holy spirits and all sorts of imaginary creatures. He mentions Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia, which did not exist at the time. And then Mecca, which did not yet exist. And Muhammad, who did not exist as described in the Sunnah. Not at all. Breathe in the name of your Lord who created man from a single clot of blood. And he mentions that the Quran claims that humans are made from a clot of blood. Something not mentioned in embryology textbooks because it is wrong. So he contradicts himself without noticing. Then he speaks about Khadija. Now if she was the first believer in Islam, was Muhammad still a pagan at this stage like most others in the region? It's I don't understand why he claims this. And if men are the caretakers of women, according to Islamic book, why was wife Khadija the caretaker of Muhammad then? 
Or was it Muhammad who later introduced misogyny through Islam? And then Revelation, were these from an angel or from God directly or fabricated or what? The guy doesn't seem to know. And then the Sirah, no, the Sirah is the biography written two centuries after the alleged revelation to Muhammad. And, you know, before any of this started. So the stories of Muhammad came out another century later. We're now in the ninth century. And then the PBUH beast be upon him. It's, I always find it hilarious that, you know, in their superstitious anxiety, Muslims wish the claimed prophet, who was allegedly installed by a god, and they wish him blessings by this very God who appointed him as the bestest of the best and the final prophet. Go figure, I don't understand it. We're now 13 minutes into this 35 minute video and we get to the hadiths, the, the stories of Muhammad, where he, you know, he, he says things, he does things, he thinks things and that's also. And then he, he claims that these contain no contradictions where in reality, they constantly contradict each other and they even contradict the Quran. For example, regarding stoning humans, killing gays and, and female, female dress code. And he talks about atheist arguments, which simply don't exist. He doesn't understand that an atheist reacts without any initial claims. Quite funny. Anyway, he goes back to biology because he, he displays this, this pitiful ignorance of his of biology and of nature, making humans a higher or elevated group than what he calls animals. He doesn't realize we are all animals. And a lot of animals also have consciousness and make cognitive choices, which he labels as being bad. Now this Burr Muhammad, does not realize that by talking about creating more and more angels without brains and as worship robots, he actually exposes the narcissistic streak of his God. And then talking about this, this Iblis, the Satan, Lucifer, devil, whatever thing, he shows his God to be a bumbling fool without any real knowledge or skills. Yet the Quran claims this creator God knows everything and advance. And spirits, or the jinn, are allegedly created using, well, not a material, but a process. Fire. Smokeless fire. Isn't that quaint? And it's scientifically wrong, because you can't create anything from fire. And the same with light. I mean, angels are mass-produced using photons, which, as a whole bunch of aligned photons, can grab, hold, and talk scientifically accurate? Really? They went to claim because humans originate from one man and one woman, where the man was created from clay. That's scientifically wrong, even though he claims his view is evidently. Okay, now we get to free will versus omniscience. Our Hyde Park Burr Muhammad does not understand much in the real world at all. He does not realize that what he recites from the Quran about mankind and jinn being created only with the purpose of worship actually makes his God needy and, as 80% of the world population do not worship this particular God, the failure rate in creating humans as Muslims is 80%. Is this, is this God of his really the incompetent creator he makes him out to be? Who then labels himself in self-gratification as the best creator. It also shows the contradiction between a predetermined purpose, free will, and knowing everything in advance. Oh, so for luck. Now, after 20 minutes, when he claims he's telling the truth, it's, more, it's, it's a fairy tale. He immediately drifts off into his lies again, claiming that the Quran is in itself a miracle, mentioning several fairy tales, lying about Muhammad, who, and come on, the way that he is pictured in the Hadiths is, was a brutal, primitive savage who raped, tortured, beheaded, plundered, enslaved and killed. And this is according to Islamic Hadiths, deemed authentic by Islamic scholars. Not a mercy at all and not for mankind. And then he goes, no compulsion, which is another lie, a blatant lie. Now, if I'm threatened with eternal torture if I don't do X, 
that, in my eyes at least, is a lot of compulsion. Just look at the list of Umar to see what restrictions Christians had to endure under Islam here on earth if they did not convert, only well, probably to be tortured in hell after death anyway. And then he goes back into science and his childlike understanding of science, unable to explain why the Quran achieves a better rating if it does not contradict any contemporary scientific understanding. Why? Is the Quran really dependent on what we understand about nature today? Now, any scientist would be thrilled to find a new and valid explanation for something unknown and find it in this book. But so far this book does not contribute anything scientific. And then he goes back to embryology, claiming that there is something about embryology in the Quran, where it's, it's, it's not. And he claims it's in depth of all things. It's not. It's a copy of ancient Greek medicine, which we know today was wrong, mixed with a fairy tale of divine creation. So after thoroughly embarrassing himself with this primitive science lie, he manages to go one worse, mentioning numerology, that is pareidolia, and of course plain confirmation bias. Now just as an example of these idiotic claims, there is no fixed ratio between land and water, as he claims. Because he says that the ratio between water is mentioned, no sorry, the ratio between water and land is mentioned in the Quran. And there is no fixed ratio because it continuously fluctuates and it changes with the movement of tectonic plates, magma and the moon. Global warming affects it too, so it's unbelievably stupid to make such a claim, especially since it's based on counting the occurrence of words. Now, he denies that he follows Islam, the man-made religion. But it is, come on, of course it is. And no, there is no proof that a God exists simply because the Quran exists. Quite the opposite. I mean, this badly written and cobbled together Quran shows how uneducated and primitive the authors were. Hardly worthy of anything I would call a God with any degree of pride. Concluding his conversation, he, he sort of repeats the lie that nobody has ever managed to disprove the Quran, where thousands have done exactly that. Me being just one of them. Come on. He lies and deceives by making horrendous fake claims, where he says the book of the ideology never teach how to harm anyone. And it's a faith, Islam is a faith, because it's not a God that we can see. God judges us in accordance to our faith, and, and there's nothing that turns against uh, hu humani humanitarian beliefs, humanitarian rights, the law of the Sharia itself, apart from what you've read on the news and everything else, but no one has ever been able to disprove that. He Quran. actually acknowledges that he lied because he now says that it's a faith, without being able to really see his God, then goes back to the false claims of humanitarian Quran and the benevolent Islam, which is utter nonsense. Just the threat of eternal torture for non-believers alone is repeated 105 times, if I'm not mistaken. And this demonstrates the fundamental hypocrisy of theism, doing good for reward. Now I do good, well at least I hope I do, but without the expectation of any reward. Gratitude and a thanks is enough for me. It's emotional, not physical. And that makes me a far better person than a theist who does not rape out of fear and helps out of the, you know, from the expectation of a reward. I don't. Now, if there is a God, and I believe that there's a chance for paradise, then why don't you just follow this religion just in case? And now, after 27 minutes, the video culminates in Pascal's wager of all things. That's how primitive this guy is. But don't worry, it'll still get worse, because after only a few seconds, he jumps straight into Paley's watchmaker argument, using the Muslim favorite, the mobile phone. It's, it's actually uncanny, it's a, it's a deja vu and just as stupid as always. The typical, I am stupid, therefore God argument. Of course, following the trend in this video of decreasing intelligence and honesty, Paley is closely followed up by complexity and the eye, well, the, the human eye, right? Without missing out on cosmological fine-tuning. 
the fact that if our planet was any closer to the sun, yeah. it would be a, a ball yes, of fire. stupidity, actually. It makes me mad. No, you fool. Earth does fluctuate and is like five million kilometers closer and further away from the sun each year without turning into a ball of fire. Could it be down to chance as complex as it is? Ah, you know, so much stupidity it makes me mad. And, okay, I will not list all the logical fallacies here, they would take too long, and I reckon they're quite obvious. Towards the end of the video, the Muslim still has the audacity to challenge Jake to research and verify his stupendous claims and to disprove his God, you know, like the way one can disprove a scientific claim. I bring a challenge to you yeah. that the Quran is a miracle. This is a challenge, yeah, Jay? Okay. Scientists are always out there to disprove them. Yeah. I want to see if you can disprove the divinity um, of the author. But hang on, unlike his God, a scientific claim is based on facts and tested data. What an idiot. What a deceptive, lying charlatan. He's despicable. He should go and hang his head in shame, but I guess he will continue to lie and deceive. Well, if you have questions or want to go deeper on any of the mentioned points, just feel free to contact me. Thanks for your time.